So this project started after I began designing 3D printed gearboxes for my autonomous rover. You can find more information about that in my autonomous rover video. But basically, the little gear motors I was initially using were insufficient, so I started designing my own. After I had a working prototype, I thought, gee, I should make a simple test vehicle to try these gearboxes on. Then that quickly spiraled out of control and ended up looking like this, with a completely custom gearbox design. The majority of this tank is 3D printed. The only things that aren't 3D printed are the electronics, bearings, axles, deck, and fasteners. Now here's a build compilation that I'll talk you through. Okay, here we go. So this whole thing was printed on the Creality CR10 with a 0.8mm nozzle. And it's all PLA, nothing special about it. Here are some print time lapses. How neat is that? Look at everything grow. Here's the pulley wheels, there's the big one with a gear on the end of it. Here are the tank tracks, they by far take the longest to print out of all the pieces. Here we are pressing bearings into the pulleys. Um, you don't need a fancy arbor press like this to do it, but it definitely helps a little bit. You can also just kind of hammer them into place if you have to. That's what it looks like. Here I am cutting metal wire to link all the tracks together. Basically, you just kind of pound it into place and link the tracks together. Super easy. Super simple. Definitely time consuming, though. Here I am pressing the axles into the gearbox housing. Now, this was actually, that wasn't the housing that I ended up using. I ended up adding one extra stage because uh, my first try had the wrong ratio. It was geared too high. Um, I'm using 5010 brushless motors, I think it's 360 kV, so they're just like low kV multi-rotor motors. Um, definitely one of my favorite motors, but there it is spinning. Um, I kind of realized at this point that it was too fast and I needed to add an extra stage to the gearbox to reduce the ratio, or increase the ratio I guess. Here I am grinding a flat spot and drilling a hole at the end of the axles to hold a pin to keep everything together, and sanding that a bit doing some more testing, also realizing that it's spinning too fast. Um, so here's, the, here's the next gearbox that I made. It has one extra stage, and I think the ratio is 56 to 1 um, between the motor and the wheel. So attaching the motor, adding the axle, and now it spins more slowly, like a tank auto. So that's the final gearbox that I ended up using. There's the other one, putting everything together. Kind of half the reason why I did this pro- oh yeah, look at all that torque. Kind of half of the reason why I did this project was to see how long these PLA gears would last. Um, it'll be an exciting thing to test over time. Here I am cutting the deck and drilling some holes in it. Oh yeah, fast motion hammering, look at that. Pounding that axle in there because my 3D printing tolerances were kind of tight on the hole on that gearbox housing. Screwing that onto the plank. Adding the rear axle. Screwing that on. Look at that, it works, wow! How neat is that? And then putting on the, uh, the middle axles. Just screwing those into the wood. Now these axles were aluminum, and that was a bad idea in hindsight. They should probably be steel. Screwing everything together, putting on the little plate that holds the gearbox axle into place, and then taping all the electronics on for some initial tests. So exciting, look at that, look at it go! Um, it was at this point that I realized I had made the world's noisiest vehicle. <laughs> These gears are not quiet at all. If I had made them like helical, then they would be a lot quieter, but they're just flat gears. <laughs> uh oh, our wheel's coming off. Gotta shove that back in. I don't have the, the locker pins on the end of these axles yet, so they kind of fall off sometimes. So as I was designing this tank, I had some design goals in mind, and those were to have as few components as possible, and for nothing to need to be printed with support material. This makes the printing process much quicker and you don't have to spend a ton of time cleaning up your parts. So all in all, those goals were met and the design is pretty simple, really. Jump off the curb. Yeah. 
The tracks are kind of slippery on hard stuff like concrete. I've got a locking pin on my main axle here in the front, but I haven't put the rest on yet, so the tracks kept sliding off. Okay, back to the build. Putting in some pins and bending them up. Now I've got to spray some more waterproofing stuff on the wood so that it doesn't get all warped. Probably move all this stuff out of the way when I do that. All the electronics. So I'm going to put all that crap in a Tupperware to keep it nice and waterproof. And then we'll be ready to take it up to the mountains. I'm spraying on some waterproofing stuff. Here we are waterproofing the ESCs. Cutting a Tupperware to house all the electronics and screwing that into the deck. Bending up all the little pins on the tracks. Mounting a little 3D printed box housing to the back that the battery goes inside. And at that point we have our tank. How neat is that? And here we are going on an adventure! I made it to my destination. This definitely was not plan A, but it'll work. It looks like it's just some swamp that's covered in snow. I just saw it on Google Earth and decided to go there. Um, it kind of sounds hollow underneath, so I'm definitely not gonna take my skis off out of fear that I'll break through the ice. So first I'm just gonna drive around a bit in manual mode and see how it does in the snow. And then I'll try and program in some waypoints. sitting here with a blanket over my head. I just connected to the rover with my little laptop here. So now I'm gonna make a simple waypoint mission. It's done a few laps already. You can see how many tracks there are. Looks like it starts to turn right here. Yep, super repeatable. I'd say the tracks are kind of clustered within like a maybe two foot wide spread. I was really surprised that it wasn't able to go up that, but the snow is pretty hard and it's got like a super soft thin layer on top. So it's really slippery. If it were warmer and the snow were softer, it would probably have no problem. Oh yeah, there we go. That's more like it.
so I'm putting a six cell battery in there just to see how fast it goes. It might blow up, who knows. Oh yeah, it's quite a bit faster. Still not fast, but faster. Let's see how these gears are looking. All the 3D printed gears they look fine, really. I don't see any major signs of wear. There's like a little bit of plastic powder along there. It definitely looks like they've worn down a bit, but nothing too significant. Wowie, that's pretty neat. Today I'm out here at the test field and I'm going to do a durability endurance test. Basically just have it drive around until the battery dies, which will probably be all day long. I've got a giant 16 amp hour three cell battery in here, and that's connected to an Arduino in this little waterproof box right here. An Arduino with a relay that just cuts the power to the whole system once the voltage gets below a certain point. I think it's like 10.8 volts. Before I run it with the big battery, I'm gonna do a quick test run with this little three cell battery that's almost dead anyways. So I'm just gonna uh, start a little waypoint mission and it should just cut out when the voltage drops past 10.8. So after that, I'll run it off this big battery and set it loose and go to work and come back later and see where it's at. The reason I'm doing this test is because I wanna see how these 3D printed gears hold up. Um, the two gears that are on the motor are ABS, but the rest of the gears are all just PLA. Um, and so far, it looks like they've been holding up really well. I'm also really curious as to how these 3D printed PLA tracks will hold up, because that definitely seems like it could be a weak point. It's in manual mode now, so I'll put it in auto mode. And there it goes, off on its mission. Noisy as hell. So the low voltage cutoff Arduino works, it just stopped. Um, but I also realized that stuff like this could be a big problem. Thorn bushes getting caught in the tracks. So I'm gonna unplug this little battery, plug in the big battery, and then try again. So it was kind of getting stuck at sharp corners, so I made the waypoint mission uh, have more rounded edges so that it doesn't ever do a pivot turn, um, which is where the inside track actually starts spinning backwards. So now it just does normal turns and it's not having any issues now, so I'm just making sure that it's not going over any clumps of thorn bush vines or anything like that. And I'll let it do a few laps and then I'll head out. It got stuck. What is it? Oh, it, it's, uh, it appears to be fixing itself. What's it stuck on? Wow. Oh, it was this. Big old root. Bye, Rover. There it is. See you later. Oh, it's only lunchtime and it's stuck. Oh, a vine got it. Look at that. Thorn bush. Go. Oh, that was a bad noise. Okay, I cleared all the vines and we're up and running again. So, time to go to lunch. It's just after lunch and it appears something has gone seriously wrong. Wow, yep, <laughs> the track broke. The track is still together, so it came off, wow. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, a full service and custom PCB prototyping service. They offer instant quotes, quick turn fabrication, low volume production, and more. Check them out at PCBWay.com. So it was kind of dumb of me to leave this driving around a field full of thorn vines all alone. Because I definitely didn't design it for that. I designed it more with snow in mind. Um, and it got pretty beat up. So if we look at the rear axle here, you, you'll see that it got bent. And I'm guessing that that was just from the torque of the motor alone, pulling that track around and getting it stuck and then bending that in. So that's pretty crazy. I need to replace that axle. Back here we've got a whole thorn bush uh, vine in the gears. So I need to get that out. Oh yeah. But this track looks fine. I kind of inspected it and I don't see anything wrong with it other than of course the fact that it's not on the vehicle. So I'm gonna clean this thing up and fix it. Oh hey, didn't see you there. We're just at the flying field this morning. So last time we tried this, I did a big waypoint mission that went all around through the, the sticks and the weeds and stuff and it got caught up in blackberry vines and kind of destroyed itself. But now I'm just gonna make a simple mission just around here on the smooth grass and just let it run all day and see what wears out first.
I don't know what kind of lube works with PLA, but I think Burt's Bees is pretty good. <laughs> Way better. What? It sounds way better. Yeah. Uh, it's it's quieter though. Yeah, you're right. It's noticeably quieter. Yeah, for sure. Wowie! It's seven hours later, and it looks like it's still going. From first inspection, the, the gears seem fine. The Burt's Bees must be working. It's very faint, but you can still kind of see where the grass is smashed down from the rover going around all day. Especially through here, you can see it's smashed all the grass. It's 6 p.m. We got the Stratus LED modules going, and believe it or not, the rover is still doing its waypoint mission. That's amazing. Sick. The battery is down to 11.5 volts, so it would probably run for one or two more hours. Uh, is there just a stop mode? Hold, there we go. Set mode. Yes. There we go. Okay. It stopped. Oh, it's definitely still covered in chapstick. So I actually used quite a bit of a uh, glow-in-the-dark 3D printer filament for this thing. Only because it's all I had left, I burned through all my other filament. And this is where it might actually come in handy. Got a little bit of glowing action there. That's pretty cool. Okay, so after a full day of driving, these gears really don't look that worn down. There is some white powder um, on one of the bigger gears. I'm assuming that's just like um, worn down plastic, but it really doesn't look like there's much wear at all on the actual teeth of the gear. It's kind of mysterious where that powder came from. I don't know. It could also just be like stuff getting caught in the gears and getting ground up. I'm not sure. Anyways, they were still all covered in chapstick, um, that probably reduced the amount of wear by a considerable amount and it didn't seem like the chapstick was degrading the PLA at all. Looks like the tracks are in good shape. I don't see, I mean they're really dirty, don't get me wrong, but I don't see any signs of wear at all. Um, and I was concerned at the areas where the pins were holding them together. I was concerned that those layers were going to delaminate and the pins would come out and the tracks would fall apart. But uh, I have not had any problems with that, surprisingly. So these things seem to be pretty darn robust. So that's exciting. I'm making all the STL files for this tank available for free on Thingsverse. However, if you do download them, I would encourage you to donate via Patreon or PayPal, because designing this thing took a lot of time. Also, I will warn you that in future videos of this tank that I have already filmed at the time I'm saying this, I discover some serious design flaws and redesign a lot of things. So if you really want to make this, it might be in your best interest to wait a few weeks until I release the next video of it. So that was episode one of the tank video. In the next episode, I will be taking this to somewhere even cooler and seeing what it can really do. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff. Again, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Have you ever wanted to make your electronics projects look more professional? Or are you a small business that needs a low-cost, quick-turn PCB fabrication? If so, check them out at PCBWay.com. Their website has an instant quote feature, so you can get started fast. Also, check out this great video on how PCB manufacturing works. Thanks again to PCBWay.